I think we gotta go back 140 years to really understand the history of this site. And um, back in the late 1800s, 1880s to the early 1900s, dredge mining was the really popular form of mining here in the Swan River Valley. And they were moving uh, floating dredge boats up and down this valley. And uh, what they left behind was basically large piles of cobble and uh, they were sorting all the materials and so um, a lot of our natural valley bottoms were turned into basically uh, gravel piles and so um, those don't provide any habitat for aquatic or uh, terrestrial wildlife species uh, and they also don't provide any recreational opportunities and back in the those days when they were doing this work that wasn't really something that they were thinking about what the act after effects of what they were going to leave behind was and so um, these properties were all purchased uh, in the mid 1900s by the B&B Mines Company um, that was a really large uh, mine conglomerate from the East Coast and their goal at some point was to become the largest owner and operator of mines in the world. And so they were buying up a lot of the uh, abandoned mines here in the Breckenridge Summit County area. And um, that was just wasn't an economically viable in the long run. Uh, and so what in 2008, the Summit County Open Space Department along with the town of Breckenridge in a 50-50 uh, by bought all of the B and B uh, mines properties here in the Breckenridge area, and as part of that purchase, um, a lot of this valley bottom that was called the Williams Placer uh, was purchased uh, by the town and by the Summit County Open Space Department. And the first thing that we saw as an opportunity uh, to improve these properties and to restore the the natural state was to do some, some river restoration. And so from 2011 to about 2014, there was some really extensive planning operations that looked at the entire dredge affected sections of this river from uh, downstream about a mile from where we're standing, um, all the way up a couple of miles up upstream, even onto some of the privately owned properties um, upstream of, of where we're standing here. And so we got a really cool comprehensive plan um, of how we could go about restoring um, these, these dredge mined areas. And so in 2016, we underwent Reach A, and Reach A is, uh, was completed in 2017. There, that was a really big project that we had to remove uh, hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of material uh, from Reach A, and um, and, he, or, and then we were able to restore a 20 or so acres of upland habitat and and a lot of really good aquatic fish habitat. And so they um, basically turned took a stream that was running subsurface through a bunch of gravels and were able to kind of turn it back on its head and, and turn it into a surface stream where we have a lot of really nice flows. Uh, we create a lot of fish habitat using boulders and return natural morphology uh, to this river system. And over the last five years, we've been partnering with uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife to do fish shocking surveys to look at how uh, those fish populations have returned into the restored Reach A. Um, and we've seen year over year increases in the amount of brook trout that are living in Reach A. And we're also seeing mottled sculpin uh, come back as well. So a couple different indicator species that we're using to, to look at how successful the restoration of the aquatic habitat uh, was. And so with the successes on Reach A, we wanted to continue those efforts uh, on Reach B, which is what you're seeing here behind me. Um, and 2017, we got a uh, conditional use permit through the county to turn the Williams Placer into a gravel mine. And um, that was a really beneficial thing for this project. So instead of those uh, piles of cobbles, those dredge rocks being a, a liability, something that we had to pay to get rid of, uh, we were able to uh, turn that into an asset. And through a contract with Schofield Excavating, 
Um, they were able to get in here, uh, collect the rock, crush it into usable materials and sort it. And now um, we are getting paid gravel royalties, which has generated to this point uh, almost $600,000 of revenue that we've been able to use for monitoring on reach A and for designing and planning reach B as well as the, the construction phase uh, which we're going to be entering into this summer uh, and we'll actually have crews out here uh, July 26th so a week from from the coming Monday um, to start constructing the new channel and to connect that to down the downstream uh, reach A and so if, if you look behind me um, you can see the large gravel pile so we still have some material to get off of this site but you also see um, some stakes with orange flagging on them and that's going to be the center line of the new channel so um, we've been able to do some of that initial surveying work um, we're ready to get crews out here and mobilize them and um, hopefully by the middle of October here of 2021 we'll have a 4,000 feet of new stream channel along about 2,000 uh, feet of valley bottom and it's going to create a, a lot of really good habitat. We're going to have 13 acres of riparian habitat which is kind of that near stream uh, close to the river habitat um, and that's something that we're improving on from Reach A. Um, in Reach A, we, the elevations and the, the way the site was uh, situated didn't really allow us to create a very large floodplain, and that's something that we're going to really focus on in Reach B, B is creating a wider, um, more kind of uh, floodplain corridor that's more prone to frequent flooding, which uh, can bring nutrients into that area and really supports just a different, uh, more unique uh, plant community and then we're gonna have uh, seven and a half acres of that upland that kind of more drier um, habitat types where and another thing that another really cool component and essential component to what we're doing here on on reach B will be the revegetation and so uh, something that we learned from reach A is that we we're gonna focus more on creating planting thickets instead of having kind of just shrubs and trees that we've planted dotting uh, the landscape we're going to kind of concentrate those into thicker uh, pockets so that uh, they hold more moisture and hopefully will be able to establish themselves uh, a little bit more readily and also by creating that wide floodplain we're also getting those new plantings closer to the existing groundwater table and that will allow them to have just a better more consistent water source and will reduce the need for us to do irrigation which is something that we did somewhat on on reach a um, and we'll hopefully create a really robu robust plant community in a short period of time and control of the erosion of any the new topsoil that we're going to be adding onto this site and so basically you know we're this is a complete transformation of this site from um, a 20 acre field of, of rock piles uh, that basically was denuded of vegetation into a well vegetated and uh, productive wildlife habitat both in the stream and on the uplands and uh, that's kind of our goal here and uh, the long story short of what we're trying to accomplish here on the Swan River. You know. For the river and for the wildlife, especially the aquatic species, creating that connectivity. We always talk about landscape fragmentation when we're looking at natural resource and wildlife management. And these sections of river where we have no stream channel are basically just a wall. It's a barrier to, to wildlife movements up and down these corridors. And so, um, for fish species, allowing those species to be able to freely move between the Blue River and the upstream reaches of the Swan River. It's just gonna create uh, more spawning and reproduction habitat for those species and allow them to, to move around the landscape to where the best habitats are. Um, and for Summit County, you know, I think that something that we value is that's the way of life here is our recreation opportunities and the the natural beauty that we are able to surround ourselves with constantly here in Summit County and so if we can 
improve those recreational opportunities for our guests and our locals alike. Uh, I think that's one huge goal of this uh, project and I know our partners at CPW and Trout Unlimited are definitely on board with that about creating those fishing um, and just uh, hiking and biking opportunities along a riparian corridor that was once completely uh, destroyed by mining is, is something that we're striving to do all the time and as our county becomes more and more popular having um, a variety and a, of recreational opportunities for for those people to, to get involved with is, is just really important and so um, one thing that is one of the biggest philosophies of our open space and trails program is creating public access to our uh, publicly owned lands and whether that's uh, Summit County owned lands like these river bottoms that we're restoring or the adjacent forest service we're really just creating that connectivity between uh, Tiger Road and the trailheads that we uh, have here and uh, the whole rest of the Golden Horseshoe everything that's upslope from us uh, to the east and to the west and um, we're creating some really good public access here to areas that had really no value to to the recreationalist and to the naturalist and um, yeah so and we can you know we've created new trail portals and new places for for public access so that's something that we always are striving to do after we completed reach a we've been we've been doing monitoring for wildlife and aquatic populations and um, we've We've seen a lot of brook trout and mottled sculpin repopulating the newly restored uh, areas on Reach A. And we've also gotten some really cool user submitted uh, photos of um, elk and moose using the riparian areas, uh, feeding on some of the willows that we've planted, as well as just having a consistent water source at the surface, uh, which has been really important. And I think that as the vegetation starts to mature we'll see those populations using this um, even more frequently as a as a refuge and as a, a food and water source because this this river w does support some really nice um, willow populations which is a good a good browse species for all of our ungulates that's our elk and our deer uh, and our moose and um, having, like I said, that the con connectivity uh, between the downstream reaches and our uh, undisturbed upstream reaches on the north and middle and south forks, uh, creating some of that um, movement corridor has been really important. So we have seen um, those. Uh, last time I was actually out here on site, I was watching some great blue herons. Uh, move through this site, which is really cool to see. And I think, again, as the vegetation becomes more established, uh, we'll start to see those kind of wading birds start to uh, recolonize these areas and um, feed on some of those fish populations that have been reestablishing themselves. So really just creating a functional ecosystem where there are um, forage species and um, habitat and shelter for these these different species is going to be really important. One thing we're always trying to do is learn from the past and one thing we learned from Reach A was that we want to create a wider uh, floodplain and by creating a wild, wider floodplain we're going to have more frequent flooding and we're also going to be uh, grading in some areas where we could potentially install uh, wetland plantings and restore some of the riparian wetlands, which are areas that are inundated uh, with water for you know most of the growing season. So by having that lower wider floodplain and grading in some areas, we'll be able to monitor the hydrology uh, on Reach B as it develops. And by doing so, we will be able to identify areas that would be suitable to plant wetland species and create wetland habitat so to create even a larger diversity um, of habitat types and hopefully encourage um, a wider variety of wildlife species to be using these, um, the newly restored area on Reach B. I think something important to understand is that Reach B is the last publicly owned section 
of the previously dredge mined areas of the Swan River and everything upstream of where we're gonna complete work this summer is privately owned. But it is also something that we have looked at in the past and planned for continuing restoration on those private lands. And so um, we have to work with those landowners and we have to create a really good relationship with them um, and do something that is everyone sees as beneficial on those. And the, the Blue River Watershed Group, who has been a really good partner in this restoration effort, um, will be kind of taking the helm from us and starting to lead some of the restoration efforts um, in the future on reaches C and D, uh, which are again upstream and, and that will hopefully bring us to completion and we'll have a continuous uh, functional stream all the way up from the headwaters um, on the Continental Divide, the North Fork, the Middle Fork and the South Fork and we'll have, be able to have con continuity across the, the publicly owned forest service lands, the private lands between here and there, and then down through our county owned uh, restoration areas on reach A and B.